in, in 1926, my parents and grandparents, both of whom lived in Santa Ana, decided they wanted a little cottage at the beach. So they purchased lots. My grandparents purchased the one on the bayfront. My parents were purchased one across the alley. The one across the alley cost $1,000 for the lot. But, and the rumor was that the one on the bayfront was $500 more expensive. So they, I think, paid $1,500 for it. I loved growing up on Balboa Island in the summer. We had a wonderful time, uh, always on the, in the water, really having fun. And then as we grew a little older, we, everybody was out playing tap the ice box and all the games. And there were two groups of kids on the island, so, uh, one group that was older than we were and then our age group. And so the rest of them didn't have much to do with us except when they played capture the flag and then they wanted us to play too because it took so many people. But we played out in the streets every night and swam in the water every day and it was fabulous, just fabulous. And then we did a lot of board games too, things like that. I'm Bev Childs. And I was born uh, in 1928. I've been on Balboa Island my whole life, summertime and then year round. I'm Blake Childs, I'm Bev's son. I was born in 1955. I was raised on Balboa Island and have been living in Corona Del Mar off and on since about 1982 in the flower streets of Corona Del Mar. Uh, growing up in Santa Ana, I went all through school in Santa Ana. Summers down here on the island. But uh, it was it was very small townish, and you could walk downtown and see everybody you knew after school. I mean, it was quite a different place. Well, my father he was a bond dealer during the depression, and and later he called himself an agriculturalist. He had a couple of uh, farms out in Garden Grove and one in Oregon. Well, right now where Disneyland and all that is, he had two pieces of property. One was an orange grove, and um, you know when the weather was cold, they had to to uh, what do you call it? Smudge pots. Smudge pots, yeah. All like that. those. And then the other was more agricultural oriented. When he sold the property, he had no idea they were going to build Disneyland, and that would have made the property worth a lot more money than it was but he thought he was getting a great deal when he sold it. And of course, World War II, every, people were going in the service and things like that. But um, my husband was in the service right out of high school. So um, and my father was the head of the ration board in Santa Ana at one point. And I remember the scarcity of the certain kinds of food, the sugar and all different things like that. I, I went there in the eighth grade. My father took me over and this guy asked me to dance and it was one of the guys in the band. I can't remember what his name, but my friend said, did you go hear so-and-so? And I said, oh yeah, I danced with him. <laughs> I oh. saw it burn down. You were there? I was there. I saw it. I was over there on the peninsula the morning burned down. Yeah. I didn't do it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, saw, I, was, I was there a day to burn. It was funny how I met my husband because I met him years ago when we were uh, in grammar school because our mothers were in a church group and the church group came down and, and my husband came with the church group. The kids came and he and his brother sank, sunk our canoe but I didn't really know him after that in years on or in high school or anything. But then when I was at Stanford, I met a friend of his and the friend told him about me because I was from Santa Ana too. So at Christmas vacation, he called and asked me out on a blind date and that worked very well and we were married in uh, August. We had a nice a wedding uh, in Santa Ana, my parents' home. 
Then we had a second reception down here at the beach because my parents didn't approve of booze, so we had another reception. Then we went up to Carmel for our honeymoon and also uh, into San Francisco and stayed, and then uh, we stayed with friends there and also in Palo Alto. So, and then we had to go, go back up for school. moved back not to Santa Ana but we moved to the beach because my folks had a home here we could live in and we liked the beach and when we moved down here to the beach there were only three families in the whole block in the winter time very quiet and, and there were still some empty lots they were bamboo patches we used to have fun when we were kids making houses in the bamboo all the kids were born while we were at 321 Ruby, and then and the beach house had no heat upstairs, no indoor shower. We had an outdoor shower, and my husband used to give the kids outdoor showers all winter long because we didn't want to use the bathtub all the time. And uh, anyway, but it was a great place to live. And, and then when we built this house, we used to go back and live in the beach house and rent this house in the summertime. So it worked out pretty well. All the Santa Ana friends we had, we joined several groups up there. They thought we were crazy to live in such a cold, damp place as Balboa Island. We bought the house, my, it was my grandmother's house. My grandmother had bought the house in 26. She never lived in it, but she used to come down and bring her friends to go swimming. And uh, they, she'd bring down a six ladies, old ladies, and they'd go out in the water and go swimming and then use the house for that. Uh, we were very happy to move. We moved in on our 10th wedding anniversary. And it worked out very well. The kids all loved it. We had an upstairs that had a little kitchen so I could heat the milk and things like that in the night up there. It was a very quick, you know, That's across right. the alley jump. I remember carrying boxes. Do you really? Yeah. Well, I had a lot of child labor. Well, we bought the house. Of course, we had to, we had to, uh, took, probably in 58, we started making the plans and all the rest of it, and the building went on in 59. Stanley Bell was the architect, and I can't remember the name of the builder, can you? No. I don't know. But he did a good job. It was a good building job. So. Yeah. And so, we were even in the newspaper as, as an architectural type house. The 321 Ruby House, my father gifted it to me and my two brothers. And we rented it out for quite a while and then we did sell it. When we first moved over here, we stayed over there in the summer and rented this house. Basically, the front house, this house paid for our family trip, so a lot of times in the summertime, we weren't in this house. We were great travelers. My husband and I always liked traveling. We traveled from the time we were married on, and um, that was our big dream. And then we took the kids on a trip every summer, and later we traveled and took our grandkids on trips. We took our kids to Europe twice, Three months one time and four time, four months another time. And uh, that was our passion. Back in the old days, and living over at 321 Ruby with, with the parents, we had an ice box and an ice man delivered ice. And then the baker came by and delivered bakery and the milkman came by and delivered milk. And uh, it was a whole different deal. And of course, uh, Washing machines weren't much, and in fact, my husband and I, when we lived there, we had, were one of our first friends to have a clothes dryer. I remember hanging out laundry in the back of the house first for a while, and then we got a clothes dryer. So, as far as television was concerned, 
we, uh, when we lived in Oakland, we had neighbors that had a TV, and we used to go over there and watch TV because we didn't have one. I can't remember. We probably didn't have one. Maybe when we moved down here in 53, we got one, I suppose. The beach has really changed over the years. Uh, it, growing up here, it was all with kids and everything. Betty Bacon lived next door, and she was born the same year I was, and they were here every summer also. So we played together all the time. It was the whole group. We had a whole group of young people that played together. It was fun. And Shirley Temple used to come every summer. Shirley was friends with Betty Bacon, who lived next door. It was her, her aunt and uncle that were friends with her parents. So they'd come down in a fancy car and park in front of 321 Ruby and get out. And we'd, took pictures, and it was a big deal. I have home movies of her on the beach. And I felt sorry for her because she couldn't go swimming and get her curls all wet. And we all had so much fun swimming, so. And, there, and we've had a raft here as long as I can remember. Uh, they finally took the raft away we had neighbors who didn't like it, and they took pictures and told the city that it was too dangerous. So the city took the raft away, and that's when my youngest child, he never got to swim to the raft because the raft was gone. And now they just brought it back this year, and this has become the biggest family beach you ever want to see, and there are parties going on all the time, birthday parties, and cocktail parties, everything's going on here. But growing up down here, well, and even when my kids were little, uh, they, the police used to go by two of them walking all the way around the island and never allowing any drinking water, anything on the beach, no food on the beach, very strict. In fact, when this house was being built, I was sitting here with my friend. We were both pregnant and we were having a beer and the police walked by and wanted to know what we were doing here. I mean, even we were on the front porch, but the house was being built. So now we see everything on the beach. It's unbelievable. I even get pizza deliveries at my door. People on the beach order pizza and they bring it to my door. So it's a big change from what it was. Well, I had mixed feelings about the beach now being so popular. But it's fun to watch all the people and they're really having a good time. And I'm glad they expanded the area. I was against it to begin with because we have a boat mooring and I had heard they were gonna take away our boat mooring, but they didn't do that, so I'm happy. We had lifeguards here. It was during the war, I think we had some, because uh, I had a girlfriend who was a lifeguard and got the job during the war. Uh, but we had lifeguards when we were renting the house out, I remember. We had lifeguards all through the 60s. Was that it? Part of the 70s. They disappeared for a while, I think in the, in the 80s, late 70s, early and through the 80s. And then they were back during the 90s. I think Onyx uh, had, a, had lifeguards, right? had a lifeguard. Well, the kids were active in the Balboa Island Yacht Club, oh, which I'm sure you've heard about too. The, that was a Beak sponsored, Beak family right, sponsored yeah. thing. Yeah, and we did that for quite a while, but then we started traveling in the summer and that was sort of the end of it. But, but my daughter was really good. She won first place in everything, I think. You did well too. Though. I did okay. Yeah. yeah. We used to have an ice cream truck that came by in the summertime every day, the Good Humor Man, and, uh, and we, uh, the, you know, there's all, we always managed to scrounge up a nickel or a dime for a, an ice cream, which is, you know, or 20 cents, 25 cents, whatever they cost, you know, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. But it was pretty inexpensive. And but that was a daily thing in the summer. And they'd, they'd start, they'd start in, you know, early, late, late June, early July, and go, I'll go till the end of summer, go to Labor Day. And it was a daily event when the, when the ice cream truck came. We had a group playing volleyball. That's when all the single people were here 
and we played on the beach all the time, all winter long, and, and every Sunday, parties every Sunday. And somebody did this wonderful picture of, of Babel Island, but in the picture it shows the Ruby Street mob and it shows all the little, our kids by the bridge. And then it shows the volleyball court in the volleyball. So it's uh, kind of fun that somebody did a picture of all of us, but it, we were the big highlight on the island there for quite a while. You, know, you can go surfing, you just put your board on your, on your you know, get on, go over across the ferry, ride your bike, and you're over at the, you're over at the beach surfing, you know? So it's just, uh, it's a fantastic place to grow up. I learned to sail when I was about six um, in a Sabbath. Uh, my, I took lessons one, one, one year. I think I was about, I think we got that Sabbath when, about, when I was about six or seven I, years I old. I took lessons with you and yes. so did Gail. Three of us took lessons through the city. And uh, I, so I was, I, I was in a sailboat at a pretty young age. And, um, and once you learn, you never really, you, once you've got to learn, you've got it. You know, it's, it's something that's never really uh, you give up. And then so, and, and when we got rid of the Sabbath, we, uh, we, we got rid of that and we got a snowbird, which was, you know, a, a kind of a relic of a boat from, a relic of a de boat design from like the 20s and 30s, uh, single sail uh, heavy boat, but it was a bigger boat. And then in the, se in the 70s, we, got a, we had a Hobie Cat, uh, six, a Hobie 16. And uh, probably, that was probably gone in the early 80s, I think, that, you know, when we got Then we the started water skiing. Yeah, and we were water skiing. We had a ski boat in uh, 1966, the Christmas of 1966, okay. about there, I think, that we um, bought our first ski boat. Yeah. And then uh, that was, the, we've had three of those all together, this being the last one that's been out there for, gosh, only about 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's been around a yeah. while. <laughs> It was a unique place to grow up here on the island um, because uh, just the whole world was your playground. I mean, it was that, that was the, the, the great thing about it is um, we didn't really have like, a, you know, what most people have like a park to go to, but the whole, we had a bay, we were surrounded by bay and beach and, uh, and, and you know, we had bicycles and rowboats to get around. You know, everybody you know seemed to have a rowboat or a sailboat very early on in life, and enabled them to get around the bay. Yeah, and and so it was a it was a wonder. It was a it, it kind of an adventure land. You know, it was, you could pretty much go anywhere, and and everywhere you went was kind of a new adventure. You might not have ever been there. I mean, the p people don't re remember, but. Uh, what, what is now Linda Island used to be called Shark Island. Yeah, right. And it was a big sand dune, sand spit island. And it was, you know, the way it was, you know, that was a playground. I mean, it was, uh, we used to, one way or the other, we used to find a way to get over there, you know, usually in our rowboat or even on a paddleboard. And, uh, and we were there all day, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, go, running amok, you know, <laughs> playing, you know, pirates yeah, and whatever, right. you know, and it was just, uh, it was a, it, Growing up here was a unique. It was a unique yeah. place to grow up. It was, and you could, you know, if you had a rowboat, you could get over to the peninsula. You know, or and of course we had, you know, you get a nickel got you across on the ferry, you know, and uh, so we could, you know, you could ride your bike over there, and we and we were doing that at, um, you know, five or six years old, you know, and I was uh, rowing around the harbor and going across on the ferry, all, you know, with not a care in the world. No one really bothered us, and and. Uh, you know, so it was a, it was a really unique place to grow up. It really was.
Well, I would rather live on Balboa Island than anywhere. And I've traveled all over the world, which I love doing, but there's no place like it here. And I love watching all the people go by, and, and uh, we have nice weather, and uh, it's just a great place to be. And nice neighbors over the years, and a great place to raise children. I never had to drive them anywhere. They rode their bikes across the island to go surfing, and, uh, and they're, bo they're still board surfing now in their 60s. And, it's just been a great place for them to grow up and for us to be here.